I actually have no idea what to say. This level of narcissism, and that word is completely overused, but it is the only word I can think of for what I'm watching right now. How anyone would ever think that this would ever be acceptable to film, edit, post, leave up. After days of having the opportunity to think about what you wanna say, you talk about how you're not gonna allow your sister to take away your custom home from you. She's got all these tears about, oh, I couldn't post anything. I couldn't physically do any X, Y, Z. I couldn't post a single thing. Okay, explain this. All right, so today we're gonna be doing a follow-up to my last video, which was discussing the Ruby Frank case. Now, there's been a lot of updates, and I know many of you are probably already following this story and following everything that you can, so I'll just be very brief with the updates and just give you what's been going on, and then we'll get into reacting to the two new videos that have been posted by the sisters. Now, the sisters were pretty much the main focus of my last video, and I only say that, and that was the only the case, because at that point, we had not heard anything from Ruby, we had not heard anything from Jody. We had not heard anything from anybody, okay? There had been no hearings, no nothing. So the husband had not given any statements whatsoever, and he still has not, by the way. That is why that they were the main focus. I will maintain, and I will give the disclaimer before I even start this video, that no one is at fault more than Ruby and Jody. Nobody is, and Kevin as well. You can tag him onto that. I don't know how he's walking around as a free man at this point. I think his ass should be in jail. They're all so disgusting, I can't even, it makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. The only things that we're hearing right now are from the family and I cannot get over how awful of a statement that those sisters made and the video that Bonnie had posted. I mean, I, I still cannot get over it. So I have not seen either of these videos yet, but I have heard that they're really not much better than the video and the statement that they all posted. So we'll watch those right after this. Let me just give you a quick brief overview. So there's been some major updates to the story. As a refresher, Ruby Frank and her business partner Jody have both been arrested for six counts of aggravated child abuse. This happened when Ruby's 12 year old son escaped from Jody's home out of a window and ran for help to a neighbor's house because he was starving, he was asking for food and water. When he arrived at the neighbor's house, he had open wounds, lacerations, and he also was extremely malnourished. So obviously this person called the police, those children were taken to the hospital, they found more children in the home, and obviously Ruby and Jody were both taken into custody where they remain. And I hope that they remain in jail for the rest of their lives. I'm so mad about this, it's like hard, to, it's sometimes it's like hard to contain it. But yeah, I didn't think this case could get any worse, but somehow it has. Ruby and Jody have both had hearings recently, and in the first hearing, Ruby dropped a bombshell accusation without any evidence that one of her children had been sexually abusing another one of her children, as well as family members and neighbors. This came out of nowhere, and in my opinion is completely baseless, and she only made the statement in order to try to save her own that's my personal opinion. Yeah, these are two of the most disgusting people on the planet, and I hope they rot in prison forever. Another update, they each had a second hearing, which was canceled or rescheduled because the internet somehow got a hold of the link, which I actually had a hold of the link too, but the people were starting to pass around the link because they heard that it was going to be on video, and it was on video, and some people were able to see briefly Ruby and Jody for the first time in their prison attire. Over a thousand people joined the call when it went live and when it was scheduled and due to disruptions they just rescheduled it. So not a lot came out of that hearing. Now they do have a second hearing that is on September 21st. So we're all kind of waiting for that and we're just waiting at this point for more information. We need more information so if you want me to cover that, do videos on that, just please let me know. I'd be happy to do it or if you just want to see this stuff, that's fine. So I feel like a lot of us are wondering what's going on with the dad. So the dad was seen briefly walking around the family home. He took the eight passengers sticker off the back of the van. I don't know why he was doing that. that. I guess that was the most important thing. He was in attendance at the first hearing where Ruby dropped the bombshell that one of her children was sexually abusing her other children. Allegedly, he said nothing and allegedly he had no reaction. That's just what was reported. He has still not commented or done anything of that sort, not even through a lawyer. So we just don't know what's going on. I, once again, don't know how he's still walking around totally free, but that's just me. Another major update though is this. So Jody Hildebrandt's niece 
Jesse Hildebrandt has spoken out against her aunt. Once again, if you want me to cover this, I can. She's done several interviews at this point, speaking out against her and recalling some of the abuse that she experienced on, while under Jody's care. These are very long interviews. Right now it is her opinion that Jody is the main orchestrator behind all of this. And I have to say, I totally agree. I don't know a lot of, if a lot of people know this, but Jody actually allegedly used to be Chad, who's the oldest son of Ruby. She used to be his therapist. Now, I can't explain how inappropriate that this relationship is. I don't think you should ever have someone who's this close to a friend being also the therapist to one of your children. And let's not forget that Jody is the same therapist who had her license taken away in 2012 for 18 months because she broke the confidentiality of a therapist and shared things that one of her clients told her with the church in an effort to, according to this client, ruin his life. I can see the same thing happening here with Chad where he probably shared something and then she told his mother, you know? So we just don't know what the hell is going on but and how much of it is true. We just have to wait for more stuff to come out. But she claims that a lot of the time spent under Jody was a nightmare. She was abused in a similar way. And she said a lot of Ruby's language is very similar to what Jody teaches. So she believes that Jody is the kingpin basically behind all of this. She doesn't take away any blame from Ruby herself and nobody should because Ruby at the end of the day has done this to her children as well as Jody. She just said it's very reminiscent. She's heard this stuff before. It's all coming from Jody. And we see that just in, in the trajectory of this channel and of Ruby and joining connections. And it's when everything fell apart. So I definitely feel like, yes, Jody is an awful, awful person. We have to wait for more because I think this is just the tip of the iceberg is in terms of Jody, in terms of Ruby, the things that we're gonna find out. I mean, they were extreme in their videos that they posted publicly. They were very extreme in those videos, so I can only imagine what was going on behind closed doors. But yeah, I just wanted to give you the update. Those are the updates so far, and we're just waiting for more. So September 21st, we're gonna have another hearing. Once again, I wanna say, we are waiting for them to say more. We need to hear more, and I place no blame more so on Ruby and Jody and also Kevin than anybody else in this, okay? I am so disgusted with Ruby. I am so disgusted with Jody. I am so disgusted with Kevin, the father. Those are the people that I am most concerned with, okay? That is where I am most disgusted. I feel like I need to say it because there's always gonna be people that are like, you're going too hard on the sisters. Well, yeah, guess what? I have other issues with them as well. So we're gonna now react to those videos. So Bonnie has posted a video and also Julie from the Daru crew has posted a video. And there's also some shocking things that are happening behind the scenes, which I also wanna to bring to light as well. So we're gonna watch the Daru crew first because it's shorter and we have not heard from this sister yet. This video is titled, My Side of the Story Concerning My Sister Ruby Frankie. I am speaking today about my sister Ruby Frankie who was arrested a few weeks ago for child abuse. By now you probably know that. You also probably have seen my sister Bonnie's video. I was about to post a video yesterday or today and just couldn't bring myself to do it. I've been trying to gather my thoughts for several weeks and I don't think I'm ever going to have my thoughts completely put together here because it's it's involved so many people. There's so many little details. I am not going to be a news update. I will not update you on news. I will not give all of the little nitty gritty details. I don't even, I know I don't need to sit here and defend myself. I know I don't need to go into the history of what has happened. Okay, so I agree with that. We don't need news updates from you. Honestly, I feel like if you don't know what to say, you probably just should say nothing. And I have a sneaking suspicion that when we watch the Bonnie video, that's gonna be more true than anything else. But I think specifically with both of these sisters, I think you do owe an explanation. That's my personal opinion because you have benefited from the fame of your sister Ruby and basically your sycophant sisters at this point. You've orbited around her. When things were good and you guys wanted to build your YouTube channels, your family channels, exploiting your own children, then we're all in for Ruby. And then all of a sudden when things are bad, you want nothing to do with her. You want to be not associated in any way. So, yeah, I do think that you owe an explanation. I do think you do. And I love that in all of these sisters' videos, responses and stuff like that, 
you can see the anger pouring out of them, but it's anger in the wrong ways, directed at the wrong people, okay? You should be mad at your sister. You should be mad that this has happened to your nieces and nephews. You should not be mad at other people for being mad as well, okay? You should not. And you should be mad at yourselves, most of all. I think you knew a little bit more than what you're leading on. And you've actually admitted that you know more than what we all knew. And we knew a lot. So we'll see where this goes and how much I get into, but the past few weeks have been extremely hard. Not only did all that happen with Ruby, but I had just moved to a new state and Landon had to go back to Utah to finish up his dissertation for his degree. And so I've been settling into a new home with the kids without his help and all of this fell down. So I literally have not had the physical or emotional capacity to address anyone, nor do I need to address anyone. You do, and I don't care that your husband's getting a higher level education. I don't. But here we are. Three years ago, Ruby, everything was great. It seemed to be fine anyway. We were a typical family. She was getting some therapy counseling because their family needed it, which I think is great. However, I think you need to get it from a great source. Read the reviews. Jody Hildebrandt and her website or therapy style, I don't know what you want to call it, connections, was not a great resource. And uh, this I 100% agree with. I think this is smart to say. I 100% agree with what she just said. No complaints about what she's saying at all. We all saw it. We all felt weird about this Jody lady. We didn't, we weren't comfortable with it. We didn't like it. We didn't like the teachings Ruby was bringing to the family functions. And we were this close to telling her, if you come to our family events anymore, we do not want to hear what you were learning through connections because we don't like it. We never did say that to her, but we thought it, um, Anyway, so three years ago, Ruby and I hung out do bottling tomatoes, and then a few weeks later, crap hit the fan, and she left the family. And she didn't even call me to say, hey, you know, Julie, you're doing this and this, and I don't like it, you're living your life in distortion, so I'm gonna have to take some time away from you. No, literally, nothing. She did call my mom, and yelled at my mom on the phone for 45 minutes, and accused her of things that were not true. It was almost as if Ruby had been making up memories from her childhood. She was trying to grab at anything she could and she would exaggerate on everything. So she started all of her lies back then, lying to everyone in her life, getting rid of all of her friends and family, and I literally had no contact with her. She wouldn't respond to any texts or emails over the uh, time that I tried reaching out to her, never got a response from her. Okay, so it seems like she's clarifying what the three-year remark was in the Instagram post, if you don't remember the statement that they posted. So I am assuming she's referring to the three years ago she cut contact with us as why they put the three years in there. Still not a good idea in my opinion, but good that she's clarifying it. Now, I do think that what she's like, recounting here does sound like Jody, who's as you know Jesse Hildebrandt claimed, is the brains behind all this, the orchestrator behind this. I think that abusers isolate people, and I think that's what was happening to Ruby, and she was filling her head with like these people are evil. I think that's probably what was happening. So it does give us some more insight into what was happening with Ruby and the downfall of Ruby and like isolating herself away from her friends, her family, and the outside world, and even maybe even her husband to an extent. We don't know what happened with that, but. Okay, but that is interesting. I was very fortunate to have been able to reach out to her daughter Sherry once she was an adult and we were able to form a really close, strong relationship, which I am grateful for. And it was then that I learned more about Ruby and it was then that Sherry had learned about lies that had been told to her. I feel like me and my other sisters have said, we feel like we've just been kind of floating on a cloud here the, these past few weeks. It we are in complete shock still as to what she had done because we had no idea of what was happening. Of course they're gonna say they had no idea and they'll keep maintaining they had no idea, they had no idea. Sherry, the oldest daughter who she's speaking about right here, in 2022, September 2022, made a statement against her mother and Connections saying she did not agree with Connections, she was estranged from the family, she was not in contact with her mother, and or father. So that was September 2022. We are now in September 2023. It has been one year, okay? You reached out to Sherry and reconnected about a year ago, allegedly. So you're telling me that 
Sherry, the same person who has called CPS, according to her, several times, okay, has been speaking out against her mother since September of 2022, a year ago, and asked the public to please help her in compiling a Google document of all of the horrific abuse that has been displayed over the YouTube channel's video evidence teachings from connections that were problematic that is still by the way out there on the internet today you're telling me that sherry never told you at, at any moment that all of this abuse was happening you're telling me that you had no idea that sherry never st spoke to you that you never found anything out people on the internet have been calling out ruby frankie for years, eight passengers family, for years about the alleged abuse. There was a petition with 18,000 signatures. You're telling me that you had absolutely no idea any of this was going on. And as she's getting more and more isolated from her family, you're telling me, I just wanna get this clear, that you had zero idea. I'm sorry, I don't believe you. I do not believe you. And honestly, I wanna put people's face to the fire of the people that should have done more. I do. That's my point in all of this. I guess what I'm telling you guys is do not just believe these people when they say they know nothing, okay? It's not as simple as that. It's time to wake up when it comes to these family vlogger channels. For years, they have chosen and demonstrated that they do not care about anybody else but themselves. They do not care about their children's privacy. They do not apparently care about their nieces and nephews all that much. They don't care. All they care about is going back to content. And I swear, if she says anything about going back to content in this video, and if there's any mention of content in Bonnie's video, I'm gonna scream. This is a lie. This family is in free fall damage control mode. They will say anything and do anything to try to make it seem like they had no involvement, they knew nothing. Guys, I know what happened with a girl I had one class with 10 years ago. I know when she breaks up with her boyfriend. You just know these things. So you're telling me that you don't even know that your sister is doing this, these things to her kids? I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You need to understand that these people lie. They lie, they're trying to save their own and I'm not gonna fall for it. Let's continue this video. <laughs> Basically, I'm here to, to say that I had no idea what was happening. Like Bonnie mentioned in her video, we are not going to let Ruby destroy another thing in our lives. We have our platforms where we try and bring brightness and positivity into other people's lives and that is why we didn't talk about Ruby in our content for the past three years. Yeah, we try and show the highs and lows of everyday family and parenting, but Ruby's topic was not supposed to be part of that content. And it was none of your business. It was nothing that we needed to talk about. And I wasn't sure if her kids were maybe still watching these videos and I didn't want to be not tactful and slander their mom and then have them watch those videos. That didn't sound like a nice thing to do either. And so, okay, this I, understand completely. I understand not wanting to discuss it. I understand keeping things offline, keeping things private. It's ironic because your family channels and you air out every single thing, shaving kids' legs. It's like, that's what all these people do and they have no remorse over it, but they can't talk about the falling out between, you know, their sister. They can't address it one time or say, we're not associated, nothing like that. It's just ironic. It, it really is. That is another reason why we didn't talk about the subject of Ruby for the past few years on my channel. However, as far as my platforms go, I do want to continue them, but the content will probably look a little bit different. I have some pre-recorded videos before all of this fell apart that I will be posting. Wait a minute, isn't this the same woman who said she couldn't even get herself to make videos, her life was so stressful, she was doing everything alone, but somehow she's still getting videos out. I mean, make it make sense. And here we go talking about the content again. I understand some people saying, oh, maybe they can't speak about the kids for legal reasons, X, Y, Z. Okay, just don't talk about you. How about that? Don't talk about you and your plans moving forward. Super weird and inappropriate. I will be posting and then after those videos, I will probably just shift my content a little bit and it'll be a little different. I hope that it's shifting away from being a family channel and just focusing on you and giving your children the privacy that they deserve. But I will still be here posting probably once a week instead of twice a week like I had been. Um, and I hope you guys stick around. Those followers who have been following me for years saw past all of this. You are here to support and love no matter what. The people who came here to my comment section with negativity and attack were probably people that didn't even know who we were. Okay, the only thing you need to know about these people is that they exploit their children on the internet, okay? That's my issue with these people specifically. I have an entirely separate issue that is independent of Ruby Frankie. I do, I really do. 
okay? I really do. What they do is objectively bad. It's what bad people do. It's what bad parents do, is they use their children for content and they use them for cash. It's what bad parents do. So I know not to take offense to all of that, even though it was still really hard to see and hear all of the negativity. So if you have been a long time viewer and you have stuck around, thank you so much for your love and support. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Who is subscribing after something so horrific as this? Yeah, you, t you sold me. I was on the fence before, but now I'm gonna subscribe. What are you talking about? Why are you doing an introduction for your freaking channel? Hello to all the new subscribers. I'm benefiting off of all these new views and I'm generating so much hype and these new eyes because my sister is a child abuser. Um, you're sick. You're sick. Moving on. So now we're gonna watch the... <sighs> Bonnie video already. I can't I just can't it's titled. I am not my sister. I am not my sister's crimes You already know my opinions about her. <laughs> I doubt this video will change that but let's start it This feels like a very impossible video to make. I know that My words will be used against me. I also know that my words may help people understand me a little. I can only speak for myself and I will only be speaking for myself other than um, the judge has asked us not to speak on certain topics that I will not be touching on. I'm assuming she's talking about referring to the kids or her nieces and nephews in any way. If that's true, then okay, fine. I mean, I guess I understand. Wow, I'm already annoyed. <laughs> What my family and I have gone through the last couple of weeks is the worst thing that has ever happened to us. It is, I spent the first week in complete shock where I felt my body and my mind and my emotions were completely paralyzed because of the just absolute shock of all of this. The more I learn, my my feelings are turning more to anger. I, I am mad. I am mad at what has happened. I am beyond okay. disgusted and I feel like I, it makes me tremble. It makes me tremble because it is, it is unheard of. It is, it is truly, it's truly unbelievable. Something that I... Okay, good to see some emotion directed in what I hope is the right direction. Pride myself on something that I enjoy doing is being transparent. And I cannot be fully transparent with certain aspects of this. And if you don't understand that, then you don't understand how the system works. The first thing that I want to say is that we have kept quiet for three years on the topic of our sister Ruby and Jody and Kevin and connections. That is what we have stayed quiet about. I like how she's so mad when she's saying that when they were the ones that wrote the statement to begin with that painted themselves in this corner that they're now in where they wrote for three years we've kept quiet for the privacy of ruby's kids okay you wrote that you let everyone to believe that for three years you sat around and did absolutely nothing i still believe that you did sit around and do absolutely nothing maybe the timelines just shifted around a little bit but i like how she's mad at all of us for accusing her of knowing more than she has let on and doing nothing about it i like how she's mad in this video about her own statement and her own mistakes because that's how these people, these family vloggers, it's everybody else is wrong and there's no possible reality that they could be wrong and they could have made a mistake. Because that's the world that they live in. It really is. We did not know what they were doing because like we said, we were cut off. We did not have access to anyone. My thoughts 
towards Ruby and Jody and Kevin and connections as is that it was all bull crap. It was, it was complete indoctrination of this thing that they created. I don't agree with how extreme they are on everything. I just want to say something also. It seems that Ruby's children with the mother and the circumstances that they've been brought up in have this entire situation demonstrated that they have more courage than any of these adults that they have been surrounded by. Because a year ago, Sherry spoke out the second that she became of age and moved out and was able to distance herself from her parents. She spoke out against connections. She broke contact with the family. She claimed that she's been calling CPS and she had been trying everything she could to help save her siblings. And not one time did these women on their social media speak out. They kept it quiet because they want to maintain and they want us to talk about, oh, well, we didn't talk about it because we want to keep things happy. And that was from the last video, by the way. I'm not making this up. You saw the video with your own eyes. She said, oh, well, we want to maintain like this happy positive. We don't want to bring this family drama, even though you wrote off the coattails of your sister for years and it was all sunshine and rainbows until something bad was going on with her, until she was starting to get backlash until people started to accuse her of child abuse, that's when you distanced yourself from her. I knew that they were off. Those are the things that we kept. You knew more than that. I'm sorry, but we knew that they were abusive years ago. People have been making videos about this on their channels for years now, calling out Ruby Frankie, calling out eight passengers, calling out Jody Hildebrandt for years. You're just thinking they're a little weird, a little oddball. They're not. They're dangerous people who, as you said, they were indoctrinated, they were X, Y, Z. I don't sit around and just allow people to lie like this. I, do, I can't. Because what was I gonna say? What was I going to do? I was not gonna come out and publicly say that I don't like my sister and I don't like what she's doing and I think she's weird. Why not? Why not come out against your sister and say, I don't like what she's doing? Why not? Sherry did it. Sherry did it, her own daughter did it. Why? Did you have something to gain from having an association with your sister? Huh. She also put on the screen, we kept quiet about them cutting us off because we didn't understand why they did it. That is what we kept quiet about. It wasn't until about a year ago when we were able to reconnect with Sherry. A year ago. Again, we kept that. Quiet. We never came out and said anything. You guys saw us together and those were little glimpses when Sherry was ready to allow us to show those glimpses. No, uh-uh, nope, 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 nope. She's saying we shared glimpses, but we, we kept quiet about it. You putting her in a video and showcasing Sherry in a video is not you keeping quiet, okay? Obviously everybody can see that you had not been with Ruby for some time and then all of a sudden Sherry shows back up, okay? You're not keeping quiet in that sense. Everyone can tell that something has happened. There's a shift here. There's no relationship there. We're not freaking stupid. We can all see what's going on here, okay? But by the way, I still don't find it very appropriate that the second you get Sherry back in your life, you're like, hey, Sherry, you wanna be in our videos? Come back in. After she was just tormented her whole life. These people can't even see what's going on in front of them. And this is my problem where it shifts from this is Ruby Frankie's sister to this is just a, another child exploiter that needs to be called out and needs to see the error of their ways. That's my opinion. With her permission, and it was then that we were learning slowly bits and pieces of, of more. Okay, so she just admitted, just so everybody understands, she admitted that for a year, they knew about these things that were going on. They were finding things out. This is a year ago. And for the last year, they posted as normal. They never once decided to make a stand with Sherry and make a statement against their sister, against connections, nothing like that. Nothing like that. In case that their kids would watch the video one day, it was quoted from the last video we just watched. Huh? Their mother who's abusing them. I can tell you that they can make their own opinions about their own mother. That's where the part of behind the scenes, we did everything that we could. We did everything legally that we could do. And for those that were saying that they'd go in and bust down doors and do whatever it took to end up in jail, because from jail, I can't do anything. 
Okay. Yeah, bust down the door. Guess what? You wouldn't go to jail because you'd find children on the brink of death. You would find abused children. You wouldn't be in jail. It just sounds dumb. I, I, I just can't get over the fact that every single adult in these children's lives has failed them miserably. CPS has failed them. The police have failed them. Their mother and their father have failed them. And I think their extended family, in my opinion, has failed them as well. Jody has failed them. Their therapists have failed them. Everyone has failed these children. And they only have themselves to thank for saving their own lives, which is sad. So I still stand by what I said, is that I did everything that I could with the knowledge that I had and within the legal rights to Ruby and Kevin. The one person that could have done something within his legal right was Kevin. Okay, this I 100% agree with. This is so true. I know we're gonna find out things about him. I cannot believe that he is walking around as a free man at this point in his life. I cannot. It is absolute disgusting neglect that he never checked in on his kids, never did anything to help his own children, she is 100% right about this. I agree. It was Kevin's job to check in on things and he did not. So when I say that Ruby and Kevin and Jody and Connections have been destroying our lives offline for the last three years, that is exactly what they've been doing. Causing turmoil within our family. Us, we would talk in circles because nothing made sense. Nothing made sense of what they were saying, of what they were doing. And it was off the wall. We didn't, we couldn't make sense of what they were doing and why. And this is where my anger comes in. Their actions have cast the worst light on me. Once again, it feels like deja vu from the first video. The choice of words is so selfish and weird. And when she says my anger comes in, is that they've cast a bad light on me? No, your anger should come in for the children. And I understand you can't explicitly say the children. You can't talk about them. I understand that. But you should not be saying my anger comes in because of what they have done to me. They have done nothing to you. You are an adult. You are an adult and you also said you had nothing to do with this. What I don't understand and what I think a lot of people are having a hard time with, myself included, is that for a year, days leading up into this and still to this moment, you have been posting like nothing is happening. The turmoil that they have been putting you through for three years has never once been reflected in your content. You're a liar. You paint this picture like your life is so perfect. After getting all the spoils of having a famous sister who's running this major YouTube channel and who gave you your career, I'm assuming as well, and helped you catapult yourself to millions of subscribers, I don't see how it's possible that you would have this much turmoil going on. You would have this much understanding that things are happening to your nieces and nephews and you still post like la-di-da, everything's great. And as your sister said in her other video explaining her thoughts, that you guys were on a cloud, floating around on a cloud was her quote. Me personally, I don't feel like I'm floating around on a cloud if this is happening with one of my siblings and I'm finding these things out and I'm hearing these things. I don't say I'm floating around on a cloud. You're nuts. On other members of our family. And I have decided that I am no longer allowing them to, to have any control over what I do. I didn't post because I physically couldn't. I physically could not turn my camera on. I physically could not come up with a structured thought in my mind. I felt completely, completely out of my mind. This has hurt every single person in our family and watching it hurt my husband makes me mad. Here's where the bombshell drops, okay? She's got all these tears about, oh, I couldn't post anything. I couldn't physically do any X, Y, Z 
I couldn't post a single thing. Okay, explain this. YouTube channel run by you and your husband has been posting as of six days ago all about your new custom home, which you're currently sitting in right now up against a white wall and it's echoing because you have so much space in there off the backs of your children that it's echoing. Let's be serious here. The reality is your husband posted five hours ago on this channel. How to connect your entire house speaker system six days ago. Edited the video, posted the video. The Juke audio system is up and running and I am thoroughly impressed and happy with how well and fluid it functions. I've been able to spend the rest of the evening working in the house um, with music playing in the background, just blaring, super clear and smooth and just conscious of wherever I was working, that's where the music was playing. He's moving on with life. So what are you talking about? You're crying these tears for your husband and for yourself. And once again, we're back to your content. The tears start rolling when it's, we're talking about how your content's getting messed up in your regular scheduled programming. Unreal, these people make me sick. I have stood by Joel's side building our home and it sounds incredibly selfish it because it is because it is given all the facts be thinking of our house but also i have watched him put his heart and soul and every waking minute for the last couple of years on this project and I will not allow Ruby and Kevin and Jody and Connections to take away one more thing. And so we wake up in the morning, we take our kids to school, and we come and we work on the house. And in the meantime... <sighs> I'm going to take a minute. I actually have to take a minute to actually collect my thoughts about what I want to say about this. Clown. I actually have no idea what to say. This level of narcissism, and that word is completely overused, but it is the only word I can think of for what I'm watching right now. How anyone would ever think that this would ever be acceptable to film, edit, post, leave up. After days of having the opportunity to think about what you want to say, you talk about how you're not going to allow your sister to take away your custom home from you. Think about the optics of this. I know you cannot speak about your nieces and nephews. I understand that. But think about where you are, what you're complaining about, what you're crying about, while your nieces and nephews are sitting somewhere scared to death right now. The world's been completely flipped, turns upside down, and they have been abused for years by your sister and you're crying about your custom home and how your husband wants to finish it and how your sister is ruining your home plans. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Go yourself. And we come and we work on the house and in the meantime and in between, we do everything that we can to be involved, but there is only so much that we're allowed to do. So you better believe that for my husband, we will push forward. We will move on. Not because it feels good in any way. It feels horrible. It feels horrible coming into the house and working on things. I've been able to spend the rest of the evening working in the house um, with music playing in the background, just blaring. Really? It feels horrible? It doesn't look like it in your husband's videos that he's been posting that he posted five hours ago. It doesn't look like he's struggling at all actually looks like things have gone back to normal already you people make me fucking sick I cannot believe people can watch this and actually not see you for what you are He's a selfish nasty person yuck and even thinking of anything else all while every news outlet every national news outlet people coming out of the woodworks making claims that are just so beyond ridiculous that I don't, there is no comment. It is so stupid that there is no comment. What's stupid about what people are saying? What's stupid? Because you put in your own statement that for three years you alluded to knowing, then you changed your story, then you knew for a year and you only knew tidbits. So what's the truth here? Somebody who prides themselves on transparency has not been transparent one time. Try to be transparent challenge, impossible. And she's so mad about it. Ruby and Kevin 
cut our family off and eventually they cut Kevin's family off as well. And I thought that was going to end my mom. She literally had a heart attack. She went into kidney failure. Her body was shutting down because it broke her. So you can only imagine what she is going through now, how we are all feeling now. And I'll only speak for myself, but Ruby and Kevin are not where my concern lies anymore. So it is difficult to have the blame put on us. To be fair, they never were your concern and you showed that time and time again. Your concern is your content. Your concern is getting back to the house. Your concern is moving forward, moving on. You've said it two times now across two of the videos that you've posted, actually three statements that you've come out with. Instagram post, your first video that you deleted, and now this one. So these have all been by you, orchestrated by you, written by you, authored by you, signed off by you, okay? So you only have yourself to blame that this is the conclusion that people have come to. When these are not the actions of us, these are not the actions that we did. And I get people wanting to put blame somewhere. I do. Once again, yes, the blame does not rest on you. The blame for the children being abused rests on Jody, rests on Ruby, rests on Kevin. That is true. But you do have some blame in this, which is your inaction, your inability to say something, say anything, do anything, use your platform in any way to help these children. You did not do that. So yeah, people are mad about that. Okay, and you try to absolve yourself while simultaneously just all you can talk about is how sad you are, you can't do your regular content. It's sick. People are mad about this, they should be. They should be mad about this, yeah. But if you had said something, anything, we are going to do this moving forward, we are gonna be helping, we are gonna do everything we can, we're gonna be cooperating with police and investigations to give them every bit of info we have. These are the things that we've done. We cannot stand this. This is the most disgusting person. If you had said any of that, if you had expressed any remorse about the situation in any way, and you can do that without mentioning the children, by the way, you haven't done it, you just keep talking about YouTube, YouTube, me, 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 me. I, 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 my husband, my, I wanna do this for my husband. They want to blame someone. There's only one person that could have helped, and he didn't. What he was doing all that time when him and Ruby were separated is beyond me. I will not let Ruby and Kevin and Connections and Jody take one more thing away from me. So you better believe I will continue to post because if that is what tiny control I have left, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take control and do what I feel. Do what I feel. Yeah, you feel like making money. Yeah, you feel like continuing to make money in the same way that you always have, which is exploiting your kids. And you're living in the house because you're exploited kids. Good for you. Your main goal is money. You showed it time and time again. There's no way around it. I don't know about the rest of you. I can easily compartmentalize these two situations. This is a bad person, okay? Whose involvement we might not understand the extent of, but you are doing a bad thing at the same time as your sister, okay? This has just opened up a can of worms in my opinion, okay? So you're mad now that people are looking into you. Well, guess what? They should look into you. Everybody should be looking into these family vloggers with a fine tooth comb at this point. It doesn't feel good to not know what's ahead. That is not a comforting feeling. I'm not even trying to find comfort at this point. I am focused on putting one foot in front of the other one hour at a time, not even a day at a time one hour at a time. I am focusing on what I can control, which is the environment that I have for my children. And that is the only thing that gets me up and out of bed every day, is my four children. So I will continue doing what I have always done, which is putting my kids and Joel first and helping in any way that I possibly can outside of that. I am not my sister. I am not my sister's mistakes. She says at the end there, I am not my sister, I am not my sister's mistakes. And in the title she says, I am not my sister's crimes. That is true, but you literally lived the same exact lifestyle. Wrote off the coattails of your sister, you are related to your sister, you pair in a very similar way. You also make child exploitation content, you make weird family content, 
you've admitted that you know about all of this stuff a year ago, you're gonna continue to keep posting and that's your number one priority. These are all things that are true. So yeah, you're in some hot water right now. I'm gonna say this disclaimer again because I guarantee there's still going to be people that don't get it. They don't get what the bigger picture here is. And I said it in my last video, I'm saying it here again, okay? The ultimate goal now, the only thing that we can do sitting here right now, because it's true, Ruby did this and Jody did this, okay? Us sitting here as the audience, we have no control over that. But we do have control over allowing people like Ruby, who exploited their children on the internet and openly abused them and had draconian and extreme and authoritarian parenting advice and measures, it is our job now to be able to identify content like that that is a precursor to much bigger problems that are happening inside the home. We all know that vloggers lie, YouTubers lie, they make life seem perfect. That's everyone on social media virtually. Parents that make that kind of content, in my opinion, indicate that there is something wrong in that house, okay? Because children deserve privacy. Children deserve to live their lives offline. They need to be of age to consent to being in that kind of content. If they want their face showed online, if they want their life showed online, that is what I believe. Now, when parents bypass all of that, okay, and they say, I don't care, I just wanna make money, and I'm gonna film my kids in the process, it's a problem, and it is a symptom of a much bigger issue that we are experiencing right now in real time on the internet. These family channels must stop. That is why I go so hard on the sisters, even though, yes, I understand that maybe they didn't have that much to do with it, okay? But this has brought to light other issues that exist. There's nothing else that we can do right now. The only thing we can do is get mad about this, is to use and apply social pressure to these people to say enough is enough. That is what I am trying to explain and get across in this video to all of you. I am mad that these children have experienced abuse. I, it makes me physically ill. It makes me sick. And I know that it makes all of you sick as well. Nobody wants this to happen. And I know that they didn't want this to happen either, but it did, okay, and it did. And it's happening all the time, every day. And there's other kinds of these horrific things that are happening behind the scenes that we have no idea about. And it's happening at the hands of a lot of these family run channels. So that is all I can say on this video. Obviously, we went in again today. This is all my opinion personally, and that's just what I have to say. This is what I take away from these videos. And as always, if you like these kind of videos and you wanna see more updates, just please let me know, leave a comment below. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and I will see you in my next one.